English as a medium of instruction has been used in the classroom of any majors in universities which have international programs. According to Madafan, McDonald and Paris in 2014, English as a medium of instruction refers to the usage of English language as a medium to teach a subject without the aim of learning the language and English was not the national language. Galloway in 2017, in addition, reveals that the countries whose young people that seem to be highly proficient in English have got accustomed to English for courses in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics or STEM. In University Acts, there are a number of faculties that use English as a medium of instruction in the classrooms. This research was conducted to find out the perspectives of University Acts students, particularly the students of the International Undergraduate Degree Program in the Faculty of Engineering, and to find out if there are any effects on their English competence. It is intriguing to find out how EMI affects the learning process of Indonesian engineering students who have to comprehend the courses through CILP, which is the Cognitive Academic Language Proficiency, and implement advanced oral thinking skills such as analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. In the context of University Acts, there was a similar study conducted by Kivthia and Jamaluddin in 2015 in the Faculty of Economics and Business. Therefore, this study also provides information on whether the students' perception of EMI in both faculties are the same or not. The research problems of this study are 1. The effects of the use of EMI on the students' performance 2. The students' perception of using EMI in their classrooms there are two literature themes that will be the support for this research. The first theme is the effects of using English as a medium of instruction on the student's performance, and the second one is the student's perception of using English as a medium of instruction in the classrooms. These themes can be studied from the phenomenon of EMI which has widely occurred in many countries for the last 10 years. This research used both qualitative and quantitative methods. The instrument used in the study was a questionnaire in order to generate the adequate number of quantitative data. The data were gathered by using purposive and quota samplings. The pilot study was conducted involving 12 students of English studies in order to generate several possible improvements needed about the questionnaire. The data gathered from the second and third parts of the questionnaire were analyzed quantitatively by using compared means tests on SPSS version 25 and Microsoft Excel 2016 and the data from the fourth part of the questionnaire or open-ended questions were analyzed through qualitative content analysis. This study succeeded in getting the total number of 15 respondents from different majors in the International Undergraduate Degree Program, Faculty of Engineering University X, with a distribution shown in Figure 1. They were asked to fill out the questionnaire consisting of four sections. 1. Demographic information. 2. Close-ended questions related to the use of English medium instruction. 3. Close-ended questions related to the impact of the use of English medium instruction. And 4. Personal opinions towards the use of English medium instruction. The close-ended questions were presented using 5 points Laker scale. The scores, afterwards, were put into SPSS version 25 and analyzed using the measures of association and compared means tests which resulted in the form of ANOVA table. The data calculated using measures of association generated the finding that can be seen in Table 1. The result shows that the value of the R squared is quite low with a number of 0.235. This value indicates that there is slight association from variable x to variable y, or in other words, variable x does not significantly influence variable y. In order to enhance or validate the result, the data need to be measured further. Compared means tests in SPSS was used to examine if the variable y or the impacts on the student's learning process was truly significantly affected by the variable x or the use of English medium instruction as it was presented in the previous table. The test requires hypothesis as follows. Based on the ANOVA table, the seek p value shows the value of 0.20, which can be concluded that the data supports the null hypothesis in which variable x does not significantly influence variable y. By this finding, it is clear that the value resulted from measures of association can be accepted statistically. 
the statistical findings turn out to be in line with the results of manual calculation which will be discussed further. Before the data were calculated by using SPSS version 25, they were gathered using Google Forms and calculated manually using Microsoft Excel 2016 that resulted as follows. The triangulation of these findings with the findings of the other parts of the questionnaire will be presented after the presentations of the findings on the second part and the third part of the questionnaire. Question 11, 13, 15, and 17 were asked to see if EMI contributed positively by giving them advantages. Apparently, the majority of the respondents gave positive responses on the questions. Meanwhile, question 12, 14, 16, and 18 were asked to see if EMI gave them disadvantages. If accumulated, the respondents tended to give negative responses on those questions. This result shows that the respondents were consistent on giving their views towards the impacts of EMI. Question 19 was asked to obtain the general views that could lead to the conclusion of the findings. Table 4 shows that the largest number of the respondents approved that EMI entertiary or higher education was beneficial for them. The responses to question 20 were quite in line with the responses to the previous question. As has been mentioned before, there was also a particular section in the questionnaire for open-ended questions that consist of five questions in total. The questions are 1. To what extent does English affect the way you comprehend lectures? 2. What do you expect from the implementation of English as a medium of instruction in your classes? 3. If there are any benefits of using English as a medium of instruction, what would they be? 4. If there are any disadvantages of using English as a medium of instruction, what would they be? And 5. Is there any personal opinion towards the use of English medium instruction in your classes? The respondents' answers were classified into two categories for each question as shown in the charts. In the last open-ended question, the researchers let the respondents choose if they wanted to answer or not. The purpose of this question was to obtain additional views of the respondents on the use of EMI. From the responses gathered, it was found that there were only 12 respondents who answered the last question. The present study confirmed the previous findings of the studies conducted by Ibrahim in 2001, Chang in 2010, and Kiptia and Jamaluddin in 2015 that the use of EMI did not truly negatively affect the way international engineering students comprehended the lectures. It was discovered that the students were quite confident to use English as the medium of instruction during the lecture, even though they also expected to gain better English proficiency during the implementation of EMI. The findings show that the statistical results were in line with the respondents' answers to the open-ended questions in the questionnaire. The respondents' answers have successfully led the researchers to find the answers for the research questions. However, due to the limitations of the study, the researchers suggested that there should be more types of samplings and research instruments in order to gain more convincing findings. By gaining a larger number of data, more valid data would be generated. In general, the findings of this study show that most Indonesian university students tend to have good proficiency of English that they feel comfortable to use the language during the lectures. However, the implementation of EMI is still unable to meet their expectations due to the lecturer's low level of proficiency. The difficulty of processing the materials also occurred whenever the language was not used properly or only used partially in the classroom. The findings of the previous study were in line with the present study by showing that there were slightly better students' performances in EMI classes compared to the BMI or Bahasa Medium Instruction classes.